For the first time since 1970 and the closure of Project Blue Book, the U.S. Air Force's probe into the UFO UAP phenomenon, the U.S. Congress has taken on a new probe of just what's going on with that phenomenon. Now this is a topic I normally would not cover as a skeptic, but with an open mind. But I'd be remiss if I didn't cover it at this point, given that we have former President Barack Obama stating publicly that the phenomenon is real, and the late Harry Reid, former Senate Majority Leader stating that Lockheed Martin has in its possession alien technology, and two government reports stating that at least the U.S. Navy regularly has encounters with the phenomenon, along with the militaries of China, the U.K., France, etc. The phenomenon cannot be ignored any longer, and taboos regarding it must be dropped, and it must be openly talked about. We reached out to multiple members of Congress on the upcoming hearing regarding UAP. Representative Tim Burchett from East Tennessee was the first to agree to an interview, but we expect to hear from others across the political spectrum. As you know, I am an apolitical interviewer. I treat all guests the same and all I want is their opinions and facts and political stuff is for other YouTubers. In this case of interviewing politicians though, they're going to be political because they are politicians. So you might sit this one out if you don't want to hear political stuff, and just treat this as a bonus episode, apart from the regular Thursday content on this channel. Or alternatively, just listen to some really interesting statements from a member of Congress regarding the UAP phenomenon, and also hear me working hard to glance past the political stuff. You have fallen into Event Horizon with John Michael Godier. Representative Tim Burchett, welcome to the program. Thank you all for having me. It's an honor. Now, it has come to the attention of Congress for the first time in 50 years to actually take on the UAP phenomenon directly in a hearing. Now, this comes apparently from being uh, unsatisfied with the Pentagon's report to Congress right. uh, months ago regarding UAP. What brought this on? I mean, what concerns you enough to say that this could be a threat to national security? And why didn't they tell us more than they did? Well, I think it's a big cover up. It's been a cover up since before Roswell. I think there's um, been obviously proof that that there is some kind of intelligence out there that <clears throat> can can put things in the air and move them at things that, at rates of speed and and change directions in manners that we're not accustomed to or could not survive. And I think the federal government has continuously covered this up. I think that they are, are you know, my daddy was a career educator. He fought in the Pacific and Second World War in the Marine Corps, and my mama flew an airplane. But And they always had a saying, you know, we always bring in the people in education to fix the problem that created the problem. Therefore, they're not going to fix the problem. They're just going to cover it up and move on. And that's exactly what the, what the Pentagon and as Eisenhower called it, the industrial war complex. I'm not sure that how that translates now with all the technology we have, but uh, the only reason we're in that we're, you and I are talking about this. And the only reason there's a hearing is because it was leaked by some folks of uh, um, some, some very compelling audio and video of, of Navy pilots, which are the best in the world. Uh, and they, uh, some interaction with some type of craft. Um, I still prefer to call them UFOs. I think it's a distraction to change the name because, you know, you hear a headline UAP or whatever. Um, I think that that just further, uh, clouds the issue for the American public. But I think that the, um, they're not going to tell us what's going on. I think what they'll do in this hearing just like the uh, the report, they put they. I believe the original report probably had some pretty inf interesting information and some pretty strong evidence of of what's going on. And the released report was something that I could have written in the fifth grade. And I think it was probably originally written, and then a higher up got a hold of it and re rewrote it. I think the hearing they'll announce 
who's going to be in charge in the federal government. It'll be, you know, I don't know, some astrophysicist or something. I'm not sure if that's the correct term or not. And I'm sure they're an honest, honorable person. And they will talk about things. They'll say that this, in fact, is something uh, we don't understand and we're not capable of doing it. And everybody's going to ooh and ah. But they've been saying that for quite some time since this stuff was leaked. And that person, in all sincerity and their honesty, will probably not they don't have the keys to the vault. They're not going to talk about reports that have been redacted upon redaction. They're just, uh, they might as well have just put one word on a paper and, and surrounded it with white out because these reports are, are a joke. They've, um, and I feel like they've continuously done this and they're, and that's why people like me never get on intelligence committees. Um, you know, it, it would upset the norm and, uh, and the way, we are spending money right now. I and mean, we just dropped forty billion dollars on Ukraine after thirteen billion dollars. And Russia's entire military, their entire military budget for twenty twenty two is only sixty billion dollars. Yet we're spending fifty three billion dollars plus. And then we just passed another law that basically excused them of any debt in the world market. And who do you think will be taking on that debt? Probably the United States of America. And, um, and I submit to you, where is all that money going? And and who can? And so you got to ask yourself, where is it going? And I'm tr sorry, I'm going down a little bit of a rabbit hole. But I think when you talk about black ops or um, skunk works, to and I've talked to folks that possibly in the know about some of this. That's how it happens. You you have bloated budgets. And you don't have, you know, we're paying $5 million within this $40 billion Ukraine budget to pay somebody to monitor that. Money. <laughs> Sorry, I got dogs. Um, I love them very much. They, they, but they're probably on the tack of some spider or something. <laughs> Quite okay. um, but, you know, we're spending $5 million to, um, uh, to pay somebody to monitor that money, to monitor that $5 million. And, you know, I'd like to have that contract. So it's, it's just, uh, um, you know, you've got a huge problem, I think. Um, it, it needs to be addressed. Uh, you have some entity that can, can travel at will and at, at high rates of speed that we're not capable of, possibly underwater, and absolutely not emitting any vapor trail or showing any heat register, which means the front end, no friction, the rear end, no, um, uh, there's, there's, there's no propulsion as we know it. So there's a lot of questions need to be answered. And I doubt that it's going to be answered in a hearing controlled by people um, who, well, maybe not Congress doesn't control it, but the people controlling the information um, are not going to release anything into, into the public venue. Now, as, as a member of Congress, um, you get to see stuff I don't. Now, have that's you correct. seen anything that you found compelling, you know, that's that's not public, that you said, wait a minute, this is this this is a problem. So Yeah, from sure, sure I have. But the the trouble with everything is I have to be real careful because is two one, is it national security? And two is somebody feeding me a bunch of garbage, so I'm going to put something out that because every everything is leaked. It, it, there is no secrets really within Congress, and we're just sort of spoon fed um, what they can do. And a lot of folks are compromised, in my opinion. I think, I think, um, just like in business or anything else, you know, you travel, you're at a bar, uh, a good looking person walks up to you and. Next thing you know, you're you're on footage, you're on film doing something that you really shouldn't be doing, or you're saying something that you shouldn't be saying. And then those and then those groups, I, I just think people are compromised, and I don't, I just don't think you're going to get in any shape, form, or fashion anything out. Now, do you think that there is the problem with overclassification in the federal government where things get classified that really have no business being classified and that maybe this lies in that arena. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and it's, it's about control. I mean, Reagan said, he touched on it and I, I would 
I, I, I've talked about it. And then somebody said, well, Reagan said that. And I didn't really know it at the time. So it was kind of an original thought. But I said, you know, what if we were to, uh, as a people, the world were to find out, hey, there is something. There are other beings out there. And maybe our focus would stop turning on the boogeyman overseas or across the border. And would folk and, and that whole military industrial complex, that investment that that poly, that elected officials in Congress make seventy five percent on their a return on their investments, knowing which missiles to which companies to buy because of which conflicts we're getting ready to get into before the the, the average average person knows. Maybe that that would upset that little apple cart a little bit too much. And so there's a lot of there's a lot of factors in there, and I know people roll their eyes. I hear me saying this, but you just have to, you just have to see and be around some of those people before you realize what the heck is going on. Now, do you think that within the federal government, there's a stigma, meaning that uh, um, people just don't want to talk about the issue? Oh, because it's 100 craziness. 100 percent. And they're going to, you know, I know what they're going to say. They're Burchett and the green little man or something. I was going to a radio show the other day and it was a national show and and you know i went on there open-minded thinking i would talk about the issue and then they started you know talking about how many times have you been probed you know and and uh you know have you been abducted you know and all this stuff you know that that just all they're trying to do is cloud the issue and oddly enough i was watching television last week in washington in my office at uh, i sleep um in my office Technically not during the day, but um, I'm not, I'm probably the poorest, one of the poorest members of, of, of Congress. I told my wife the other day after reading how much they reported we were worth, I said, we need to get my baseball card and comic book collection um, appraised so it can up my value. But I, I was, I was watching <laughs> television. I was watching the TV the other night and there was a, and sure enough, there was a thing, Roswell debunked or something, you know, it was something I'd never seen before. And it was just, Oh, and they kept showing, you know, people dressed up like aliens with, you know, um, dealy bobbers coming out of their head like antennas or something, you know, and it's just, look, it's an attempt to, and that's what they'll do to folks like me, but I don't care. I, you know, I, I'm, I'm sick of it. I'm sick of the cover up. I, I, I love a transparent government. I like to, they need to open the dadgum books. Um, cl clearly there are things that are of national defense. And, and, you know, we can't disclose because the Russians could steal it or the Chinese could steal it. But, you know, you can't turn over a rock in Washington, D.C. and there's not a spy up there. I mean, the, the Chinese know how many paper clips we use in the Longworth building. You know, they, there's documented cases of them, of spies <laughs> sleeping with congressmen, of, of Chinese spies being um, drivers for U.S. senators for years, documented. And, and you know, and but now, you know, so um, uh, I question a lot of that. Sorry, I ramble a little bit, but I'm I'm very uh, I'm very concerned about this issue, and well, it needs to be it needs to be brought forth. You're not the only one. We know that the Russians and Chinese also see these things. Absolutely, one hundred percent. Now, what do we know about their programs and in looking into this? Do you think that they, might, instead of leapfrogging us in technology, do you think that they could leapfrog us in knowledge on UAP? I think we're all about the same spot. I think we maybe know a little more because I think we've had we've had some stuff longer than they have. This is just my, just my, um, um. You know thoughts. I think Putin's sure. probably Putin is probably paranoid, and, and, I, and you know I go back to if Putin had it. I'll go through my analogy. If Putin had it, you know his ego. That guy he'd land a UFO on the front steps of the White House, get out bare chested, ride a ride a unicorn over and wrestle uh, Joe Biden, and get back in it and ride back to, to Russia. I mean, China. Yeah, that would be amazing. I'd, I'd video that. If I, but if China had it, they'd own us. China had it, they would own us. And if we had it, we would control the airspace. So I just don't, I, I think there's just too much out there we don't know. I, you know, either, either we have something that, that is, that we're reverse engineering and we can't control it. You remember, you've read about the atomic bomb, Oak Ridge National sure. Laboratory is in my backyard here. It's not in my district, it's adjacent to it. And, uh, but it's, um, 
Um, it's home to a great restaurant, by the way, Big Ed's Pizza. But um, but the uh, about six thousand people that work at Oak Ridge live in my in the in my legislative district. But the um, the, the the story I was trying to get to was when they when they set off the nuclear bomb, Oppenheimer wasn't sure whether it, they could control the uh, the reaction, the fission, thought it could destroy the world. And they weren't really sure when they set off the first explosion. Well, I think a little bit of that is what's going on. If it is, in fact, skunk works or, or dark ops, I think that they do not have, they, they can't, if, if we've got it, we can't control it. And we don't know exactly how to, how to um, harness it. Uh, it. But if it's not that, then, then it is a, um, um, then it is something from out of this world. Now, Harry Reid, which I know you're opposite party, but let's set politics aside. I don't care. And uh, Harry Reid said before he passed away that he had always heard, the uh, Senate Majority Leader, he had always heard that Lockheed Martin had an artifact. They had a yeah. downed UAP. Washington is a place of rumors. And have you heard rumors of this? 100%. I've talked to... Um... I say I've talked to people who were in the air when some of these Navy pilots saw what they saw and they and they verified it. And there was no reason for them to, to lie to me. Um, I, I have no reason to doubt that. Yeah, I don't, you know, I, I get along with everybody. I mean, I, AOC, she told, I was, the, she hollers at me all the time. Hey, Merchant, you know, and I call her Cortez. And I, she's something about we were talking. I was, uh, I'm conservative. I'm just not angry about it. So I, I don't have a, I don't have an enemy up there, actually. Um, I, I don't, I, it's not in my genetic makeup. I fight them on the field. And then after it's over with, we'll go out and get a chili dog. We're all Americans. 100%. And, wow. I, and, and this, this is one issue I think would unify us. Well, if we're uni- yeah. yeah, if we're unified, we're not fighting, and it takes everybody out of power that's in power. It it removes that structure, and it's and brother, it is not about Republicans and Democrats. It is about power. Now, in your fellow members of the House, do you get a sense that you've got a lot of support into looking into this? Do you feel like? Uh, behind the scenes, other congressional members that normally wouldn't talk about the subject because of the stigma are very interested in it as, as much as you. Very few, very few. I'd say a half a dozen. And they're, I'm the most vocal and I get it. It's just in my genetic makeup. Um, but I, you know, if I see it feel a little friction, that generally the way I go. And I feel a lot of friction in this because people are shut up about it. You can't. You talk about it, and people just shake their head and walk off. I mean, they just, they think it, they don't want to be stigmatized with it. And, uh, but I tell you, um, you know, I printed it. I've got a t-shirt on my, on my campaign website and we sell them. It says, uh, cause I was quoted first time I was on something, I was on TMZ or something. I said, look, more people believe in UFOs than believe in Congress. And, um, <laughs> and I still believe that. And, I did, and Congress doesn't, not, Congress is uh, is not a very, uh, you know, they read opinion polls and, you know, and, and granted 40 something percent or something, I think people believe something's out there or maybe more, but, you know, whether they're going to, they're not going to cross party lines. It's not an issue that's going to show up on any polling data when gasoline's hovering close to $6, getting going to hit $6 a gallon. You don't know if you get yeah. my drift. Yeah, it's it's but it could very quickly become a problem because the the what the reports did say is that it could be a threat not only to national security but civil aviation. In other words, you know, what happens if one of these things messes up an airliner? <laughs> you yeah, know, well, and, yeah, I, I agree with that, but I don't I just don't think though that's going to happen. I think that um if it had it would have already happened. And if and it's from out of this world. They've had this technology a long time. And, and you know, I, I go out at night and look at the stars and um, in the vastness of God's universe. And I think, wow. And I look at some of those stars and the light 
I mean, just to figure the vastness that we can't, we try to put it in this little, you know, in our little solar system, but the vastness of God's universe, some of the light that we're seeing from stars left those plant, left those stars before the time of Christ. Some of them have, are, 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 are stars that have collapsed millions of years ago. And we're just now seeing the light from it. I mean, that, that's some pretty big vastness. And, um, and you know, and I, I'm a Christian. I'm not a very good one. I read my Bible a little bit, not as much as I should, but you know, the book of Ezekiel, it, it pretty much documents, although it's written in King James English, which was translated, but you got to figure the most, um, technology they had back then, the most advanced thing they had was a wheel. And they just pretty much describe what you would consider a traditional UFO and landing craft and coming down. And, and just, um, to me, that's, uh, that's very compelling. And you look at, you look at pictures, you look at hieroglyphics, you look at inside of, uh, I've seen pictures. I've never been inside, of course, inside a pyramid, but you look inside a pyramid and you um, at some of those things and it's in, in ancient paintings that have something back there. And you just it's, it's this is something that's been around for a long time. And these beings, if there are beings, I think if they were going to do us damage, they already would. Now, if they were to come land, it wouldn't be like, um, you know, Rod Sterling's. Uh, uh, I don't know if you've seen that old episode, that Twilight Zone episode to serve men. To serve you know I men, mean? yeah, it's a yeah. classic. Yeah, yeah. I'm not going to be the first one getting on one of those saucers. <laughs> <laughs> no, me neither. <laughs> you, know, you know, I like it here. But 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 granted, I, I think if they wanted to do us harm, they would have done us harm a long time ago. And uh, I just not seen any evidence of that. And then uh, I just think we we need to be more forthcoming with with what's going on. And I realize, you know, there's talk. Well, it would disrupt the religious balance of our world and offset everything. And you know, I, I just don't buy that. I, you no. know, the, I, I, you know, I read Genesis. God created the heavens and the earth. I mean, the heavens. I mean, what the heck? He created it. He thought it into existence. And so it. I just, it doesn't affect my faith one bit anymore. As a matter of fact, it makes it stronger just because um, I've, I've got to, I've got to verify this. So I don't know if he did say it or not, but it was rumored one time that Billy Graham said, um, if you think we're the best that God can do, then you hold God in very, very low esteem, you know, cause we're not exactly, uh, um, I would suspect he, 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 he's got some other things out there besides us, but. Anyway, that's just me. Well, I've looked into it, and I can find n no religion on Earth that actually condemns the idea of alien life. It either yeah. doesn't address it, which the Bible really doesn't address it, or it says it exists. It's in, um, well, Islam, actually. So I haven't found that it would do anything to religion. I think it would just be a shrug. Uh, yeah. It's a sort of wrong-headed, you know, there might be a few fringe people here and there, literalists and things like that, that might might get a little upset, but they're just going to think they're demons. <laughs> well, yeah, <laughs> you know, they're I mean, <laughs> flat earthers and the rest of those, I mean, that was, you know, back in, they did uh, you know, whatever. I mean, I get it, but, but uh, people didn't think there's anything that existed past the, the borders of their, uh, of the, of, of, of their, um, limited islands, you know, so yeah. continents. Now the hearing that's coming up Tuesday. Now, if it appears that you're getting stonewalled again by the representatives from the Pentagon, what can Congress do to go further? I would hope at some point we would subpoena folks. There's enough out there. We could call in people and give them and 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 give them some sort of uh, freedom to talk without being prosecuted under the law. At some point, I would think that would be something. There's a there's a legal term for that. And I should have looked it up before you and I talk. Um, I have enough lawyer friends, uh, but there is some sort of. Uh, you know, they, they won't be convicted of a crime or anything. And I think we ought to allow that. We ought to allow people to come in and speak freely. And if they have to do it in a, in a closed meeting, or if they have to do it behind a, you know, they used to have mobsters come in and testify behind a screen um, that were squealing on their, their, their mob cohorts. But I, I just think at, at some point enough is enough. I think this is a, I just don't think this is going to do anything. 
I don't have any faith in Congress to do, to do the right thing. Um, and, and I, I just think they're, they're just going to, this will, they'll run us down a rabbit hole. Now, from what you've seen behind the scenes in classified briefings and things like that, that, that I don't get to see, sure. do you think that this presents <clears throat> a grave threat to national security and that we would be making an enormous mistake by not looking into it, even to the tune of funding an investigation with a billion dollars? Do you think it I, would be a huge mistake if we don't look into this deeply? I think it would be a huge mistake if we don't look into it. And we can look into it with but these bloated budgets that we have right now. I mean, you know, we're buying, we're buying ships and you know, the next war is going to, it's not like December 7th, 1941, the Japanese bombed Pearl Harbor. And we have six months to ramp up. You know, these wars are going to be fought. Trump was right. This space force thing with, um, uh, you know, the computer technology we have now we can shut down energy, um, complexes and other things. I just think, um, um, you know, we could do it within the budgets. We don't need to put a big price tag on it because that would be the way they would surely kill it. They would kill it that way. It wouldn't get out. Nobody would do that when we're we're sending forty billion to Ukraine. We can't put four billion on a border wall. Um, we can't, we got veterans out on the streets. The VA is um, is a bureaucracy, uh, endless bureaucracy. I mean, you know, it's it, they do all this by design. I mean, it's just about power and it's about control. It's about staying in, staying in control. And that's all they do continuously. Yeah, well, that's government. And I'll, I'll bet it works the same in every every government on Earth, you know, all almost 200 of them. Um, yep. Now, what about a personal probe into this? It's happened in the past, right, that right. Uh, members of Congress, and I, I'll, I'll actually point out Barry Goldwater on this, went and tried to personally find out what's going on with, you know, this thing that Lockheed Martin seems to have right now, or presuming it's the same thing, Roswell, whatever. And he met massive resistance in the Pentagon. Sure, sure, so, sure. Yeah, yep, you're 100%. You got to have a president that's not compromised with the guts to do it. Clinton talked about it, and he joked about it, joked about Roswell. He read some letter. Um, Reagan talked about it. I thought Trump is about as close as you could get to it, but he's not there anymore. And it was just so big. The whole the corruption was so big that there's just, you, you, you gotta have somebody that's not compromised. And how do you get to the position of being, to be able to run for that, for, for president and not be almost to always be compromised. You gotta, it's got to be somebody like a Trump. I don't care if you like him or don't, but what I'm saying is he's got to be somebody that comes from out of the political spectrum that doesn't care about, that isn't there. It's going to run one term and it's going to shake it up because you got you just get these people that are embedded. And um, I, mean, I come from Tennessee. I was in the state legislature and, and a lobbyist told me one time, he, some guy kind of talked tough to him from the governor's office as punk. And he said, uh, he, after it was over with, his, his name was Tom Hensley. He was the golden goose. And he was smoking this big cigar. And he was a liquor lobbyist. Oddly enough, we were best friends. And I don't drink. And I never voted for liquor bills. I didn't vote for taxes on them either. So he liked me there. And he said, he pulled that cigar out of his mouth after that guy. And I thought, man, that guy just really dressed, but, and dressed him down. And he said, Burchett, he said, uh, he said, governor's come and go with the old goose. He'll be sitting right here. And you know what? The old goose is still there. And that was over 20 years ago. He rides around on a little scooter now up in Nashville. And, and it's the same with, with Washington. Those people, not, the, not so much the lobbyists, but the people that are in some of the lobbyists, some people that are ingrained, they and their line of thought. And then it's so compartmentalized. You bring new people in, people die, people move off, people come in on top of that. And then it's hard to crack into that. And you really just have to have access to the files and all the things, not the stuff that they, they, they'll bring out, you know, the Project Blue Book stuff. But look at all those files that they've got that have all that information redacted. It's like a piece of Swiss cheese. And they, um, you know, that's the stuff you got to get to. 
And it, it seems to be that when when you do see something that's redacted like that, it's much, much more than, you know, I mean, some of these documents come out entirely black or almost entirely black. And you have to ask the question, all right, is that really protecting names and means and ways, you know, things like that? I mean, is it is it, is that much information? <laughs> That's why I asked about overclassification is that, yeah. I mean, is it just, are they just too aggressive with classification or are they hiding something? And I, 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 I think sometimes it's the exact opposite. They're just trying to send you down that trail. And that's why I'm very careful about people that come up to me in the hallways of Congress or call me on the phone to tell me about something. Because are they planning something in my head that's just not accurate on purpose to lead me down a rabbit hole? Because obviously, I mean, I've been watching my Twitter traffic at Tim Burchett and, um, and I'm getting all these followers or former military, former intelligence, all this stuff. And I'm, I'm thinking, you know, why the heck are they following me? Are they, are they, they may be former military, but are they a current contractor? You know, are they, it, and so um, I'm, I'm very cognizant of the fact that, that, that we've touched a nerve on this issue, but I also am cognizant of the fact that, and I'm very guilty of this, you know, Domino's has an ad that used to say, we, you want your pizza in 30 minutes or less. Well, Americans want their pizzas in 30 minutes or less. And that's about our attention span. And they know they'll move us on to something else. I used to say when I was the mayor of Knox County, there'll be another wreck on the interstate tomorrow. And what I meant was there'll be another story that'll pull us off the, the headlines, either good or bad. There'll be another Ukraine. There'll be another border incident. There'll be, um, uh, um, baby formula shortages, there'll be supply chain issues. There's always another issue that's going to pull us off and, and it's going to change our thought process of what we're thinking about. And I think this is going to be one of those that they hope we do, but I hope the American public is, is, is aware of that and will um, we'll be very persistent in the pursuit of this information. Do you think that it is possible that even at the presidential level, things are being hidden about this subject. In other words, are there have there been presidents that just simply weren't told what was uh, actually going on? Absolutely, absolutely. I truly believe that. I believe. That. I mean, this president right now is not. You know, I. <laughs> I, I finally met him. Um, I guess a little over a month ago, and. Uh, long story short, it was, we were at an event to get at the same time and I didn't want to walk out. Everybody, you know, people walked out on Trump and I thought, you know, respect the office, don't have to respect the person. So I'd, I had a, I actually had a, hit, an important phone call I had to get to, but I texted my offices and I said, scratch it, I'm going to stay here. And so I stayed and then I walked out and, you know, I heard this clump, 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 clump after the president finished speaking and I saw, uh, you know, this whole line of, security secret service and one of them in fact grabbed me and told him i wasn't supposed to be there and then i because then it's cold i always wear a carhartt jacket and um that's kind of my thing it's not i wasn't trying to make a fashion statement it's just they keep those buildings cold up there and i don't and i'm all, and at home i'm always working i'm a redneck and i'm always working on my motorcycles or cars so i could be laying on the ground in my nice suit so i'm wearing my carhartt this capital of uh, not capital Police secret service grabs me and then I show them my congressional badge and they say, oh, and then the, one of the Secret Service agents recognized me and said, he's OK. And then and the agent said, I'm so sorry, sir. And I said, no, you're doing your job. You're doing your job. That's fine. I, I, you know, and you got to You got to be tough. And so I moseyed on over towards the escalator and I turned and dad gum. There's the president of the United States right there. He was wearing his mask. Of course, COVID. And he's and I said, Mr. President, I said, uh, I said, I don't agree with a dadgum thing you say, but I said, but I try to pray for you every day, which is true. I do. And um, and he started talking to me and brother, I could not. It was a jumble of words and I could not make I could make out the words. I just couldn't make out what he was saying. And I immediately went from anger to pity. And so I think we've got a real problem in the White House right now, obviously. But also, uh, I think um, you could tell him one thing today, and I'm not sure if he would know it tomorrow. 
and I, and I think there's more in control over there than, you know, I mean, the people weren't voting for him. They were just voting against Trump, the ones that voted for him. Now, my last question for you All right. gets into private and, you know, private initiatives to look into UAP, like the Galileo Project. I don't know if you're aware of it or not, but it's sure. Harvard University and Dr. Avi Loeb to look into this. And one thing that could be of great use to them is the declassification of data sets from all of our various arrays of, of surveillance that we have, of which there are many. Um, do you think it, that's a possible avenue to get some data from, from that, that stuff on, on UAP declassified and in the public arena? Or do you think they're, they're, the classification system is just too rigid and we're not going to be able to look at 20 year old data from, you know, an yeah. F-18, you know, something like that. Do you think yeah. that's, that's an I do. I actually absolutely do. Except again, is it going to be tampered with? Is it going to be legitimate? And, um, is it going to be pertinent to what's going on right now? So I, I, I think it absolutely is, but, so you got to realize that that I don't think the intelligence committee. I think they're just the only reason they're doing this is because those those uh, Navy pilot tapes were leaked and those audio and visual of them going after that Tic Tac following it. And uh, I think they that was that was leaked not by one of them. I think I'm pretty confident I know who, who had a part in that, and I'm glad they did. But um, I don't. I, I I think any of that is suspect. It, it, that that's been out. That's been, and anything that they release would um, would be suspect. But if you could get a a true virgin piece of material, I think that that would be very advantageous. But then again, you got members of uh, people that are investigating don't care about it. They're just doing it because it's in the news. And, they're going to make fun of people like me and, and you, and then they're going to go on and about their business. Well, it, it you know, sometimes you just have to speak freely though. <laughs> yeah. You know? well, I, I am. I don't know if you've caught it. Oh yeah. I, 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 I believe it. I believe it. Yeah. Now tell us about your podcast, Tennessee talks. Yeah. Well, it's a, it's just a, I, I go all over. I've had the former ambassador to Poland, his friend of mine, Victor Ash. I've had, um, uh, local people, some very local successful business people. And, and I just get different people from around the, now I'm getting people from around the country. I'm able to, I've had, um, ambassador to Taiwan, you know, I've been able to get a lot of people since I'm in Congress, I serve on foreign affairs committee and, um, it's a little more down home. I, I want people from Tennessee to that. Uh, and, and, and two people now follow me from around the world, but because of this issue, but, um, it's just I want them to see what's going on in the world that I live in in Washington. I want the rest of the world to see the world I live in in East Tennessee because East Tennessee is one of the greatest places in the world. You know, people knock Tennesseans, but U-Haul, the the uh, the moving van trailer service, they uh, said that Tennessee is the most traffic to one way state in the country. People moving to and there's a reason. We have low taxes. People like to work. And it, in East Tennessee, it's the only place in the world where people don't speak with an accent. So that works <laughs> out pretty well. But, but you know, and it, it's, a, it's a great place to live. God has blessed us beyond belief, the, the creeks and streams and the woods and forests and stuff. And, um, and just the people. When people come here to work or they bring businesses here, I was Knox County mayor for eight years. It's the third largest county in the state. And our best asset was the people, man. They, these guys had come from all over the country and all the world, frankly. I mean, they'd meet some old country boy, come up and shake his hand and give him eight hours a day. And, and um, you know, and, and, and they took a lot of pride in that work and they show up for work. And, and so East Tennessee is a great place. Our best asset is our people. And, um, and we've got some exceptional folks and people are moving here in droves. And it's, uh, it's exciting. A little scary, but it's exciting. Well, I've been to Chattanooga many times and a uh, beautiful city and man, the, the, the landscape of East Tennessee is amazing. The mountains, 
Yeah. Uh, not so amazing to drive through. <laughs> yeah. But, it's because all, all you folks from out of town are blocking the traffic, man. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> now, also, um, there will be a link to Representative Burchett's website in the description below, burchettforcongress.com. And where can you find the Tennessee Talks uh, podcast? Where can everybody go listen? Um, well, I'm not very educated on that, brother. I, I suspect you can find a link to it on my website. Um, if you, you'll go to that, just yep. Birch, and so we'll, we'll, I, there's a link there, I believe, but, um, you can follow me on Twitter at Tim Birch. That's my, that's my cool one. I've got an official, um, Congressman Birch at, uh, Twitter, but that's that I don't really, you know, that's the official stuff. I just, it, it's me ranting and raving about what's going on in the world at, the, at Tim Birch. That seems to want be the one everybody at 55,000 people seem to follow pretty regular. So all right, Representative, thank you for joining us today, and I wish you great luck, and tell us on Twitter what you find about this subject. Okay, brother, I will, and I hope that meeting Tuesday, I hope I'm incredibly wrong about that meeting on Tuesday. We shall see. Yes, sir. Thank you. Event Horizon and my channel are now available as a podcast on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and YouTube memberships. Early ad-free episodes, bonus episodes, and sleep-focused content. Sign up now by clicking the links below to your platform of choice.